for some reason. Welcome to this week's episode of the Beyond Nemesis podcast, everybody. Your returning hosts. I'm Mayor Reynolds. I'm Jedi. And uh, we're going to start things off. We've got a lot of topics, but uh, we, we took a poll and, you know, 9,000 people voted in the poll and said that they wanted us to start with Halo again for the... I think we've only not started with Halo like one week out of all... 17 episodes but make it 9001 because i did not vote in there and i want to start with halo <laughs> jade i was actually the person who voted to put it number one but <laughs> i was the one that created that, the poll. that's pretty much true so we're not lying uh, all right so we got some overwatch stuff apex stuff uh blood hunt warcraft tons of stuff in there but we're starting with halo so halo Why do we start with anything else halo infinite there i think there is a podcast to giving them free uh Free marketing right now called you had me at halo out there and i don't know whose oh, podcast cool. it is or if it's any good but that's what it's called was it the same podcast where joe staten went on and he Probably like bad. uh are you familiar with that because he was recently on, on his on a podcast and released some like cool inside knowledge i know he said that like he made some vague like it would be Returning really cool maps. if old maps would come yeah but we don't know like yeah. exactly what that means yeah 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 yeah. i mean yeah. there's no reason I, I personally thought there was no reason that they can't, like, release full-scale remakes of old Halo maps, like, mm-hmm. three to four of them, like, a year. Like, not just, like, remasters, but, like, actual remakes. Like, that should be easy See, content. They did that with, like, Halo 4. Like, I think that was, like, the last... No, 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 Halo 5 definitely did it. I'm wrong. Um, It was so weird. Halo 5 actually did a remake of a Halo 4 map, and nobody <laughs> liked that map anyway. Like, I think I remember that. that? <laughs> it was Haven. It was so bad. Um, I don't remember but, like, uh, any Halo Four maps. Period. There's some pretty good ones. I can't name off the top of my head. All I know, the one I can definitely name off the top of my head was Ragnarok and Haven. Ragnarok because it's the Valhalla. Well, that's remake. Blood Gulch. Yeah. No, that's not Blood Gulch. It's it's they're they're, uh, all, they're all the same. They're not the same. No, they're all the same. No. Blueprint. I will actually commit a hate crime. Not not the <laughs> political kind of hate crime, but like the one where I hate you. I'm not saying it is the same, but it's it's the same idea. It's a long scale map with a base on either end. I hate that you're generalizing it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, I'll never be satisfied, Mayor. But anyway, yeah, I mean, what do you think they're going to do? Like, what does that mean, you think? Like, the classic maps? Like, what do you exactly do you think that means? Just remaking maps? or I just think they're remaking them, yeah. Yeah. Cause... If they, like, touch anything to those existing maps, they're going to get fired. Yeah. Okay, I think the thing is they got MCC already, so they don't, they can't they they, sh- they there's no need to just like port them over and be like oh go play the old versions like that doesn't make much sense. Well, I mean like they're still supporting MCC like right, a lot. Right, that's what I mean. Which I thought was really interesting because I thought they said that they weren't going to support it anymore after Infinite launch, but I guess they kind of have to considering there's not a super lot of content going on in Infinite. I st- I still think they should merge the merge the, the products and put infinite and mcc as part of the same so you, no matter like literally you can just access all the content from one game like you want to play halo 2 playlist go ahead you want to play infinite go ahead you want to play you know so there's a i think i mentioned him before his name is Favin. he's a he's a youtuber who makes a lot of content around video games and he actually had like he, he's got a lot of takes very mm-hmm. controversial but like this one made a lot of sense he was just like putting all the games into one game is the yeah. worst idea ever you think so he he made some pretty fair points i'll, I'll link it to you so you can okay. watch on your off time but he's the type of guy who you're just like wow you must be great at parties 
Like, uh, like he's got good points, but it's who, just like you know what? It's, who's the, it's not it, really that hardcore of a, of a topic. Is it Halo Follower who's got the bad reputation? Is that yeah, the Halo guy's Follower's name? Got the bad reputation yeah, I don't. Sure. I don't really like him either, to be honest. He, he well, had a lot Halo, of like unnecessarily like negative uh, videos when I and I unsubscribed because I was just like, I don't want. The thing is, is like I'm all for critique. Like I listen to at least like one World of Warcraft podcaster who's like two thirds of his videos are like pretty critical and negative, but. There comes a point sometimes where you want some positive in there, like something to look forward to, you know, like at least the like, the, like, I don't know. He was given a lot of bad takes at the time. I was like, I'm done with Dude, this guy. Fabian is the Alex Jones of, of opinions, <laughs> Here we bro. Go again. Not, Two episodes in a row like him. with Alex Jones <laughs> <laughs> name drop. <laughs> well, I mean, like, seriously, like if you watch him and you're like, yeah, I want positivity in there. Like, you're not going to find it in Fabian. But like <laughs> some people go like for Alex, that. So just like Alex Jones, he's he's right. <laughs> some people go for that, you know. It's it, it works on some people. I, I I do think you inevitably though, like this kind of accidentally launches us into the thing that you mentioned before the podcast. Like, I think if you're negative for so long, like you inevitably like burn out your interest in said topic, though. So like, if you're you know, if I if I start a YouTube channel, let's say it's about uh, I don't name a game. I I don't care. Apex, Apex Psychonauts. <laughs> That's gonna be a weird one, but you know, like, uh, and you're just like you're just making negative video after video after video after video. Like, eventually, like, well, at what point do you just say like, I don't like this franchise anymore, and I'm gonna stop wasting time on it. You know what I mean? And I, and I feel like mm. the viewers, you can do that to your viewers too, as like a creator. Like, it, it, it sometimes it's venting, and it's like it connects you with the people because you're like, yeah, man, like that's so true. You know, like mm -hmm. shared pain. But then eventually, yeah, it's it like goes an echo chamber. Yeah, but eventually it's like, all right, well, you know, like clearly because you get you're just in this spiral of negativity. Like, I don't care about this franchise anymore because look, it's pure crap. And I'm going to just go play this other one. And then like you've burned your own viewers out and now you've got like nothing left, you know? You know, this is a good segue into the gear thing I was talking about before the, the call happened. So as far as what I was mentioning and just for the viewers so that you understand what the hell I'm talking about is that. There was a topic brought up about gears that it's the community's fault the game failed. Another player, another player, but an org owner. He's also a coach for the most winningest gears award team. It was Optic Gaming at the time. Now he runs UU Gaming. Um, ashes, <laughs> die ashes. UU Super cool or guy. UU? UU, not okay. UU. Okay. <laughs> UU was trademarked already. Um, no, but UU, UU like they, they're a really great guy. Like, oh, ashes, is a really great guy. Super smart, intelligent person. Um, and he started his own org after Optic dropped playing Gears all together uh, because Gears Five is a bad game. And what I was going to say, I disagree, into is, but anyway, I think actually I've come to the conclusion I think Gears is a bad game. I think that at a technical marvel, it is a masterpiece because that game looks and runs phenomenally. I think it's a fantastic yeah. example of how creatively flexible like humanity has come. Like, yeah, I think that's cool. So, well, Unreal however, Engine's insane too. Unreal Engine is insane, and the people at Coalition are great. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I wanted to say was that the the community part, where it's just like, oh, um, this person's saying the community's at fault. The Ashes is saying that the developer is at fault. And I I, I said it in a tweet. I'm like, I'm not gonna pretend I'm the one who was like following this, like mm -hmm. as I am like Halo. But like in general, like Gears was a shit in the bed on the developers. Um, and there's plenty of context in those replies where I watched a video where one person, where the community manager at the time said, how come Delta Squad wasn't at launch, wasn't in the game at launch mm -hmm. for Gears 5? Mm -hmm. And he's just like, you know what? That's a good question. Like, we underestimated the value of Delta Squad and, like, how valuable they are to the mm -hmm. community. Um, and you can look into further into the context about the game development. And just so many yeah. things were broken. Like, Dr. Disrespect played the game. The game was broken. He didn't want to play it anymore. And, I loved like, watching Doc play Gears, by the way. That was amazing that was content. Fun. Hearing him that was scream fun. every time he got nashered in half was absolutely amazing. I actually loved, and I brought it up as a point to say, like, yeah, the community did, did kind of kill the, the game a little, little bit. Was whenever, like, Doc was talking about, this is a bad game. This is awful. And then, like, the community was like, well, you cheated on your wife. <laughs> you know, like, that was some peak drama. Gears is a pretty hardcore game, though, and there's there's one video. I think Doc's channel made it himself. It was like the roller coaster of Gears of War Five or something. So the first the the intro of it is it's Doc and he's and he's like, ah, 
know, I kind of like it, man. Like, it's really, like, intense. And, like, you know, like, he's, like, he's, and, and like, like, the next three minutes are him, oh, like, screaming and raging, <laughs> like, slamming his mouth. And he's, like, pull the shot. He's, like, screaming. And he's, like, so, but then it, eventually it, like, it comes around to, like, yeah, he's, like, he actually, like, I, I think I'm starting to like this, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I remember him it's and, a, like, Nick game. Merckx playing it in the uh, early yeah. days of Gears 5. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a mental game. It 100 percent is. And uh, that's, I'm glad Doc was able to kind of like pull that out and like honestly expose it in like the good and the bad ways. Mm-hmm. The good ways is in like this is what the content is specifically with the competitive scene, because if you've watched any kind of competitive videos, it is literally like people like mentals uh, whenever he was playing on optic, just absolutely tearing other players apart by saying like, Give me your credit card. You're basically handing me this W. You're, you're absolute <laughs> trash. Like, person than that. Like, I, every Gears event that I've been to has been like that, and I love it for that reason. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, on the other side, it's just like, oh, you've got an entire community saying you've cheated on your wife. You shouldn't be playing a game if you're bad at it. And it's just like, why would anybody stick with that game if yeah. this is how the community is going to treat them? I mean, so I think like 50 50, you know, a game. Paladins and Overwatch have the same exact problem. Like, very, very. I mean, not to interrupt you continue i'll tell you my point in a minute. yeah i will say that's a different segue hold on one second um but like as far as um you know the, the the game culture itself it's just like you made a point of us of like how many times can you just keep being negative up to the point you give up on the game and yeah i've seen it so many people just completely give up on gears at this point oh yeah it's like it's it's heartbreaking at this point because of like how they how even they're like you know what i just can't keep bitching about this game anymore yeah. i have to move on like i'm i'm gonna i'm finally realized that i'm an adult with the ability to change my perspective yeah <laughs> i think i think there's there's that definitely and I, and I always tell people that like you can do that before you like get down and like and like and you're absolutely like venomous though you know what i mean like you can you can recognize that like like you said like i'm an adult and like there's other games to play and i don't need to like consume my life with hating this like i can literally just go play another game and if i ever want to come back to this one i will and if i don't want to like mm-hmm. i won't like that's okay like i i've thought about this several times where like and, you know, this this conversation about like the community has come up with a lot of different games you know people saying like i don't want to play x game because the community is so toxic you know, Overwatch and Paladins, like I said, are two of them that came to mind for me. But when you think about it, and we talk about this a lot, like games as a service, and we've talked a lot about, about it a lot around Halo lately, uh, Halo Infinite, um, that that launch and fail. It's like I can think of almost none of all like the prominent games out there that have like massive like communities like with like large followings, like the big ones, AAA. I can't really think of any where the communities aren't absolutely up in arms on fire and believe that their game is dead and and dying Mm -hmm. and it's trash and the developers are terrible. Like go through the list like Halo, Call of Duty, uh, Apex kind of in a neutral position. I wouldn't say it's it's on fire right now, but it has been at times. Um, CSGO, Gears of War. Yeah, I mean, like, like the list Overwatch, uh, it, the list goes on and on and on. Mm-hmm. And it's like, nope. at what point? I, I don't know. <laughs> it seems like every game is just like everybody thinks the entire community, like the most dedicated people are like, it's terrible. It's dying. It's dead. The developer doesn't know what they're doing. There's no content, you know, like. <laughs> It's interesting because you'll never see like actual adults say those things out loud. Like even pro players won't go as far as to say this game is dead until like it is actually quite literally dead. Like, like Gears playing. Esports, yeah, Gears of War in particular. Like, yep, we're shutting down Gears Esports. Yeah, this right. is the last thing, and they're like, okay, yeah, the game's dead. Like people have been saying that for about Gears for a very long time since Gears Four. Mm-hmm. But like in terms of just like game dead, like I don't think you'll see actual adults be saying those no, things out loud. If they are adults. You've got some adults who are really trying to stretch to get some sort of engagement or impression <laughs> on social media. Yeah. That's, that's what I've it's summarized the majority of all of our... It's like the easy yeah. two-word, like, I'm going to get literally some... bait. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, What a contrast to your point also. It's just, like, of all the games as a service titles that were just, like, game dead, like, people always were, like, just give Halo back to Bungie. And it's just, like, dude, Bungie, like, set the, <laughs> set the precedence of, like, how can you achieve your game dead... In a, in a in a cultural way right yeah, yeah. it's just like 
Once they once they introduced the vault system, literally, I've never seen the Destiny community actually like be so actively negative until they introduced the vaulting system, and it was just like I, I mean, gotta, they got to do it though. It wasn't until like, I mean, there was like a good like two years after Destiny Two came out where tons of people thought that it was just like it was done for, like because because they had a lot of problems, like said so the vault system, the shader system, just really crazy like non like just i don't want to say this isn't even a thing but like the accessibility of the game was really bad and i mean they they still have to do some some interesting things and i i do think destiny's in a pretty good place right now but you know like they're they vault content and you know like a lot of the a lot of people don't like that because it's like well i paid for this content i paid for this entire expansion and you've now removed it from the game mm -hmm. um so i mean even bungie who i would like you said i would i would at this point consider to be one of the better game as a service developers there was a time not too long ago where everybody thought that it was like amateur hour over there for a game as a service you know i don't think anybody realizes how commercialized gaming is going to be now and the the hollywood of gaming is like just now finally starting to boom at this moment and those people investing those stockholders those shareholders um those people calling the shots don't understand how you could just turn a switch off from creating content on the TV screen for, for entertainment versus building an actual game. Interactive um, and space. Yeah, the interactive space is so different. So uh, I think it's just growing pains right now. Um, and we're just going to eventually get to the point where it's just gaming is going to be a, a full entire game as a service. And we'll have, like Doc said it earlier today, like we're going to have those gems, those very few gems like Elden Ring that are going to come mm. out and like really define, you know, yeah. gaming and what it what it was meant to be when it first built, was built up and started catching yeah. traction. I, I like honestly, the only game that I can think of that is probably consistently delivered um, on the content front as far as like at least content pipeline, because you could argue that it releases a lot of garbage content that like is potentially game breaking is Fortnite. And that is, you know, a, a studio mm -hmm. of over 3000 people um working on a singular game like they have no other projects and it's on the uh, it's on an engine that they built by the way so they own it, it like they know it in and out like no you know it's their thing and it's it's also the most profitable game and so they've got it like an unlimited amount of resources too with all those licensing deals and yeah, Fortnite's had a couple of like off seasons, but you know, it's as far as like consistency, like you're 100 yeah. percent right though. Like, like they're, weekly they're updates. Not everything is going to be perfect. Like no. there's no such thing as the perfect game. Like it's 100. But consistency as an organization, Epic is yeah. like definitely there. Right. As far as delivering content, like I said, there's a lot of content people have not liked. You know, the airplanes or the gerbil balls or this gun or that gun. That happens to every game, right? There's always a meta, um, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. But I feel like they're the only one that has like fully lived up to the like this is what game as a service like looks like like mm -hmm. fully fully realized. But not there's ninety nine percent of the video game industry isn't going to be able to pull that off. Like, yeah, yeah, realistically, not because of talent, but because of resources and a lot of other things. It's just gonna be money at that point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways, you want to talk about Halo finally? Yeah, yeah. What do you think of Halo Season 2? So it's here, it's out. It's, yeah, it's not that bad, actually. It's, yeah. it's still rough around the, around the edges, 100%. Like, I'm not saying it's, like, fantastic, but I'm enjoy I've enjoyed the last part in standing way more than I've played, like, King of the Hill. I think the new King of the Hill mode is actually doo-doo. I don't like it that much at all. Um, but, and the, the maps are pretty all right, actually. I, I think, like the last... I think Breaker is outstanding. I think it's a really yeah, good map. Yeah, Breaker's great the the new the other map the competitive one i'm not i'm kind of mixed feelings about it yeah uh, me too. i feel like it's just a, a maze in some ways it, than others but looks pretty it is I was a gonna very say, like aesthetic looking map it, it a it's beautiful b the first time i saw it and so, somebody popped in my chat and said this i knew it wasn't but i was like this reminds me of halo 3 like a lot like the mm -hmm. visual look of it and somebody in my chat was like is this a remake and i was like no it's brand yeah. new map it, I, it looks like epitaph i do think i do think that it's designed in a way that i'm not sure that i like for competitive like the other halo competitive maps that we have an in infinite like this feels like very old school like there's a lot of like weird 
elements to it like you can run the flag and i know it's like a risk reward thing but you can literally just run it straight down that middle bridge and like score it in like like 10 seconds if you want to and mm -hmm. um like to jump down and get the overshield like you're literally i think it's an overshield or maybe it's rocket whatever spawns in that it's middle yeah. below like you're so exposed it's like unreal like it feels kind of like a i don't know if this is like a competitive uh you know design but I don't for and it, for BR starts. There's so many wide open. Yeah, too many lots. Too too open for me. Yeah, yeah one hundred percent. And that's like why uh uh what's it called? Narrows in Halo Three was so well designed. This map feels like Narrows and Epitaph like merged into one. I don't mm -hmm. know if you remember what Epitaph was, but it had if the. I saw him. I lift. probably would. Yeah, it had the lift that would take you all the way up, and there'd be like a little floating platform, where there's like a rocket launcher or a brute shot up there. Um, that never <laughs> made it into. Like, competitive uh that never made it into competitive like halo 3 mm -hmm. but narrows did because narrows was so like geometrically vertical mm -hmm. uh really nice placements positions and like it, it was honestly probably one of the best maps halo 3 put out in my mm -hmm. personal opinion i like narrows a lot um but whenever it came to like epitaph like epitaph was not so mirrored on each side so if you played uh if you play like any kind of like Gears of War map, right? It's like each side is somewhat mirrored for mm. the starting point, and you move in, blah blah blah. You get that. Halo, Halo's never really done that properly, and this map um, kind of feels like a Gears of War map in, mm. in a sense. So I like it. The season so far, pretty good. Last part in standing is really fun. I think yeah. there's a lot of opportunity around that competitively. Yeah, for sure. uh, what about you? What do you think? I, I I agree. It's it's new Halo content. Like I I felt I feel about it the way I expected to feel about it. Like I'm like this is pretty cool. You know, like yeah. it's it's not lighting the world on fire. Like it's not like there's nothing there that's like man, you gotta play season two of Halo Infinite. But it's it's new Halo content, and you know I'm enjoying it. Um, I I do think that specifically with Last Spartan Standing, it's really good. Like my especially my first like dozen games or so, I really felt the kind of like the tension that you get from like a, a battle royale that like you know mm -hmm. scrambling for your life kind of thing trying to stay alive i do think and mixing in the, the whole gun game concept is interesting um i do i do think the power-ups feel a bit odd like like you know yeah uh, like like they, having invisibility also which i think it also mutes your footsteps it's like a major major advantage and overshield is just like it's a free kill on somebody um, so I'm not sure how I feel about that. I kind of wonder if it'd be better to put, um, like, I don't want to say rocket launcher cause that'd be too easy, but to drop like a sniper rifle on the map, um, something like that. They, I don't know. They need to be able to utilize those power ups as instigation tools to like force players to centralize. So like if they That's somehow manage to get that into like the top of that lift area where there's that bottom tunnel area mm -hmm. where you can also drop in from those two sides, like if they instigated like putting a like a power up up there that would force players to not camp that would also force players to be a little bit more strategic and mm -hmm. make more kills happen up on the map i think that the way that they have like these drops now it's like dog shit <laughs> i'm gonna say that i don't it's like just... it at all like you can literally start the game and one will drop right in front of you but... and you just have like a free os or, a or free camo i also like, don't... i don't think that's fun i also don't know how i i truly don't know how to do this and i haven't given it like a whole lot of thought but like there was a final circle I'm sure you've seen it. You can be spawned like in the final the circle. And, and I don't know how to fix that because like I, there was one game. I think it was the first game I won where no joke. I killed the final guy like there was a 1v1 me versus him. I killed him five times in the final circle. So he was constantly spawning on the outside and he had five lives left. So every time I'm sitting there looking into the red zone, looking for this guy to be running in. And I don't know mm -hmm. how you fix that. Cause you can't just spawn him like right next to me. Like wh yeah. what are you going to do? You know, it's maybe they could be a little bit more strategic on how like the circle closes. So that way you have a chance to kind of get out. To be honest though, like I, that's happened to me a couple of times where I'm forced to spawn outside of the circle. And I personally don't hate it, actually. I mean, it makes sense. Like, how else are you going to get these players spawned in, like, yeah. a circle that's, like, 10 feet you, wide, right? You can come from anywhere. Like, I think yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, you can come from anywhere still. Yeah. Uh, and it, the circle doesn't really do a lot of damage to no. you, to be honest. Like, no. it really isn't going to be killing you anytime. Like, if you die to the circle, like... Something's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Something's wrong. I will say that the circles move incredibly slow, though. I don't yeah. like the way the zones close in. I feel like there's more people dead by the, like, there's usually almost like an average of like three people left by the time, like, 
the circle finally starts closing. Yeah. That's just me though. I'm an absolute slayer. I've been like dropping good 20 bombs like these That's games. Pretty so I've been really pretty good. Yeah. I think 13, 14 um, is my best. It's, yeah. But like zone's way too slow. To be honest. Yeah. I, I, I feel like there is a, a kind of an odd, the progression of guns feels a bit odd to me too. Like there's a, like, I feel like when I start out, like that first combo that I have is like pretty solid. And like the next like two, three, like probably the next two evolutions that like mid kind of game i'm like feeling like i don't feel like my weapons are actually getting any better i feel kind of like i don't know give me the sidekick back i'd rather have the sidekick you know but yeah. i lost it <laughs> and you'll see players who are just sticking with that too like you can look at their scoreboard and they can probably have like nine never evolve the yeah, that's just never not evolving. a bad idea i guess it's your choice if you want to do it or not um i mean if you wanted to like it, uh, this is a tactic that i think last barn standing does really well is that you could choose how you upgrade that process so if you wanted to get to like maybe the last two circles like you still accumulate those points you yeah. should be able to just keep upgrading, upgrade yeah. upgrade upgrade until you get to the next one so yeah um you know you still have opportunity to like grab that br by the end of the game but right. at the same time it's just you're right like those middle guns are just so i mean once lame. i get like, like commando and bulldog i'm fine with um it's just until you get to that it's kind of like i don't know it's just it feels weird to me. Yeah. I don't know how to fix Commando, that. Commando, I'm not a big fan of the Commando to begin with, but I still, I could still put in some work. I can it. use I it, yeah. I'd rather not use the Commando. I'd much rather have a pistol. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I probably would too. I don't, I don't mind the Commando. Obviously, the BR is way superior, but um, I don't I don't mind it. I also, I've noticed that there's a major difference. You play on controller, right? Yeah. I, so I started Halo Infinite playing mouse and keyboard, like the first maybe like week or two. And then I switched to controller uh, permanently. And with a with the mouse and keyboard, I feel like the commando is like way better because like with the mouse and keyboard, it literally has like no recoil at all. And I'm not sure that it's meant to be that way. But to the point where like when I posted a clip that went uh, like it was like first week, I think went like somewhat got a lot of views on TikTok, like 30,000, I think. And like everybody was saying, like, you're hacking. There's no recoil on your commando. And I was like, what are you guys talking about? And then when I played with it on controller, I was like, oh, like that's what they're talking about. Like it's much harder to control on a controller. Mm -hmm. Um, which makes sense. It's it's cause it's a gun that kind of jumps. The recoil kind of like hops up and down. Yeah. On a controller it is not forgiving at all. No. The BR is hundred percent easier to use. <laughs> oh, way easier. It's kind of unfair. Um, but as far as the rest of the seasonal update, I haven't jumped into ranked at all. I actually have no interest in playing ranked for Halo, to be honest. It's for me, I don't think it's valuable. I think the progression system is still pretty busted and doesn't really make a lot of sense. I mean, Halo 5s was way better in every every way possible. I don't mm -hmm. know how or why they didn't carry that over. Mm -hmm. Like, on paper, it looks the same, but or not on paper, but on the screen, it mm -hmm. looks the same, but on paper, it's completely different. And I want to blame Microsoft on this one because of their true-to-skill true, true to skill, like, yeah. uh, Azure system. Like, even the guy, the guy who, uh, who runs Creative Assembly who created the ranking system for halo 2 which is like i never wanted to use that shit <laughs> i i uh the problem i i like competitive halo mainly because of the settings so i love no radar and br starts i think it's really good and i, I think that's a, that to me is like just that alone i think gives it like one of the most competitive vibes in like mm -hmm. for me in like any first person shooter i think a lot of shooters including halo right now struggle with the incentive to play ranked you know like like even apex ranked like okay you get a diamond dive trail like who really cares you know what i mean but like, like the, the grind of diamond is significantly more impactful because you have a lot of risk and reward there especially with the yeah. amount of time that you have so yeah. i would prefer an apex system more yeah. than what the halo system is to be honest yeah i the biggest problem that i have that has held me back and really frustrated me with with uh halo infinite's ranked system and I don't know how you fix this. It, it has can be a problem for any arena shooter, essentially, especially in ranked is quitters. Like I get it nonstop quitters and disconnects. And when you're down, especially in an objective game, uh, yeah, three B four, you're never. I mean, if you if you're actually matched against opponents of equal skill and you're down a man, you're not going to win. If the, if the other yeah. team was way worse than you, you might pull it off. But. I, I would put, I want to give the benefit of the doubt. And, you know, we talked about it like a little bit briefly on Twitter. It's just like the game just is still broken. It keeps crashing on people. Yeah, I imagine that there's still. It could be that too. Yeah. I want to put it on that, to be honest, because I'm pretty sure these, everyone's in the same boat right now where if your game doesn't crash, 
one out of four, your chances of someone getting crashed is going to happen. Yeah. So I think that's what it is. I mean, I haven't actually really seen anyone rage on Halo Infinite just yet, at least competitively. And I've been playing Valorant and Apex for, for a while now. And like those, <laughs> you want to talk about quitters, you know, you know how to spot them. Um, but like that brings me to another point. It's just like whenever it comes to like just the ranking system and how Halo like tries to forgive you is that like it's not on par with what other games are doing. So like in Valorant, there's loss forgiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, if your player, if you have a player dropped out, same yeah. thing with Apex, yeah. you know, you'll get loss forgiveness. If not, you get a chance to rejoin the game. Yeah. And Halo is like neither. Neither. <laughs> yeah, it's You're just screwed. Go, you, yeah, lose, go you lose 24 RP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like get get uh, kick rocks, kid. Uh, so game net significantly needs an overhaul in the ranked and as well yeah. as like the, the logistics of stuff i've heard the xbox version doesn't have those crashes but the, they're very common on on pc and it's extremely yeah. frustrating have you you have seen me rage on twitter about the rocket launcher in halo infinite right yeah yeah oh yeah. my <laughs> god every time i play and i pick it up and i'm like i go i jump and i go to like aim at somebody because like you're both racing for the rocket launcher like at the beginning of the match and you can't because for some reason you got to roll the freaking tube on the rocket launcher and you can't shoot it even though you just risk your well-being to pick this thing up somebody <laughs> can just you know a couple people can you just can shoot. um just why why <sighs> it kills you what why why just pick up the rocket launcher and press Switch. double tap y as fast as you can I, I it switches guess, it out you don't I, get I that guess, anymore i guess that's the the solution i have tons of pro it's the only gun i have this problem with i guess it kind of makes yeah. sense it, switch to YY. You I've had times problems. where I shoot it, it makes the sound effect, and the I get killed like as it's about to happen, and the round doesn't come out. Like that sound mm -hmm. literally plays of the rocket coming out of the gun, and nothing comes out. <laughs> it's like, come on, Pretty man! Much. Like, how do you play this? If if it didn't play the sound effect, I'd be like, oh, okay. Like I just didn't get the shot off. You know what I mean? Well, I hate to break it to you, Mayor, but the game is broken. I don't know if the Halo community has let you know that yet. <laughs> yeah yeah they yes they have oh man. yeah but overall i'm pretty satisfied i don't know if it's gonna last six months though but uh problem, i hope to I god think. that uh we've got a lot of communication if not if these drop pods don't suck i hope we get communication because yeah. at this point that's what people want to see more than actually play the game is yeah they know what they're in for for the next six months you need to tell them what they're going to be getting when the next season starts or at least give them some sort of visibility i think so the e3 thing's right around the corner it's literally literally in a month now when they so. announced that yeah when they announced this project tatanka whatever they're actually going to call it i'm sure it won't be called that but um i think that could definitely do some goodwill if, if they can commit to it coming out this fall that would be huge mm -hmm. um and then i i think yeah if they could do a mid-season update and actually drop like even like three months in drop a remake of an old map i think that'd go this a long a long way that's all they need is six month seasons will be fine if they can do mid-season content updates if they can't then it's a horrible idea they've leaked some stuff and at least you know customize like customization wise it's pretty it's looking pretty good they've yeah. got the yapping that's happening in like september which is why it's pretty long ways out um but you know that's in the mix of the infiltration uh thing going on right now i forgot what it's called but They've got some stuff that we know is in the pipeline for sure. Mm -hmm. And some of those cosmetics look pretty dope, actually. Like there is I like um, a lot of the armors. I actually hate the armors for this for the season. I'm not going to lie. I don't like how exposed the back is. You it don't just like the looks Tenrai like a... one or that Tenrai. The, uh, what do they no, call I it? Love fracture. Tenrai. fracture. Yeah, new, I love the, like the new one. fracture. OK, the new fracture is like a hit or miss for me still. Yeah. But in this case, the, the infiltrator one, the one that we launched with like mm -hmm. that one is is kind of okay. like a mixed review for me I, I just don't like the spartan gear where it's like super exposed in the back it kind of looks like fall it looks like scrappy armor put together i'm not for it for halo uh, what yeah. i liked about halo was that it's well put together um but i get it at the same time it's charge not me. it's not the worst thing ever charge there's me. worse stuff in I, halo 5. I will give them 99.99 for doom slayer armor i will give them <laughs> you can pretty much i will give you a blank check you put doom slayer armor in the game i will buy it like and now that they're under the same house, they can do it. Well, now I know what you will write a blank check for. So yes. <laughs> my my blank check I would give immediately would be for Pokemon Heart Gold and Heart and Soul Silver on the on the Nintendo Switch. It, they don't even have to like remaster it. So just for your <laughs> so, so you know, Heart Gold and Soul Silver are remakes of Gold and Silver, mm -hmm. and like Gold Heart Gold Soul Silver, best Pokemon games ever, like without a doubt. If they just 
ported those exact same games onto the Switch, I would literally die. You know what? Because it's not great. I would replay I, it as if I've never played it again. I agree. Nintendo does a pretty bad job of bringing their games forward. So does Sony. But I, I saw somebody call out today that you can you cannot purchase Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, 3, or 4 on any modern console. And I felt like as, as few people would do that, well, that's still like, that's that's like a crime, man. Like, that's isn't like that a, a Konami franchise. problem? Not so much as oh, yeah, like yeah. anybody else. 100%. Okay. Um, yeah. But I, that does, like so many of these companies need to do a better job of bringing their games forward. Well, speaking of bringing games forward, I actually don't remember if it's on the list. Uh, DRM over the past weekend. Are you familiar with it? Like having the... I don't know what the story was from the weekend. I know what it is in general. So over the weekend, Xbox had localized outages yes. for Xbox Live. And I swear to God, like the entire like gaming community has just d done nothing but pump out memes and poop on Microsoft for having like no <laughs> DRM. Some people were like locked out of playing their games actually because yeah. that's how DRM works. Yeah. Um, that's the legality of it. That's the protection way of it. Like I get it at the same time. Yeah. Like, let's just, that's just the world we live in and that's what the world's going to be moving forward to whether you like it or not yeah uh but in this case there's localized outages and like for the past three days i've just seen nothing but like xbox and sony stands like like battle it out about like why drm should exist and why drm is so bad and what console does what be better than the other do you do you remember when mode? sony had a, had a playstation network outage that lasted like a month this was probably like what 10 years ago 2011 yeah <laughs> Yeah, they, they also had people forever. like hack into their systems and stuff like that. That was like a common like rebuttal. It was just like, well, PlayStation had this happen a couple of times. PlayStation, or this one literally, time. games died because of that. The the, the 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 final SOCOM game launched during that period, which was an online only game, and then surprise, you couldn't play it, so it failed. And Sony was mm -hmm. like, oh. Zipper Interactive, the developer, guess what? Your game flopped. You're closed. And it's like, you literally launched a multiplayer-only game when nobody could play multiplayer, and then you closed the studio. Dude, Sony took such a massive loss from that because yeah. they had people hacked, they've lost accounts, they were, like, sued left, right, up, down, and every specific 360-degree angle, and they had to, like, make up for their services on clutch. degree angle? <laughs> they had to, like, make up for it by, like, also, like, giving away like trash games like, i remember that i got like little big like planet <laughs> sack boy whatever yeah. i got for my psp and oh. i was like wow these games are trash dude these like suck. just don't even bother giving me anything yeah, at this I know. point i get free is free but that was bad that's that was brought up though over the, over the send me of the a weekend. bag of chips and i'd appreciate it more dude honestly like if you sent me a bag of lays dude i'd be so pissed because that thing is like 30 percent chips 70 percent air yeah it's true the other thing um, that i see people get on about uh, in addition to DRM, I said like, it's DRM, right? Not DMR. Yeah, it's not DRM. not a classic mayor confusing letter. No, uh, you're thing. good. Um, is always online. I see people flip out about games being always online, and I have never understood it because I'm like, how how often do you unplug your internet and go and play a video game? Or like like every other service that you utilize is always online. Netflix always always is online. always online. Like you know like. Your phone is always yeah, online. And but with video games, people rage. You know, like Diablo 3 is only online. I can't believe it. And it's like... Such a nit... The, Twitter is so interesting because, like, I mean, this is where we see most of that conversation and drama pop up. You've got, like, the most niche... And I'm like, and by most niche, I'm talking about, like, there's people who, like, are the monster community on Twitter, and then there's people who are, like, the video game console stand community, and they're, like, so small, 0.001%, and it's so weird how loud they are, um, in terms of just, like, actually hanging out. But what I'm getting to is that, like, people can complain about, like, DRM and stuff like that. Granted, they're on a service that is online always, all the time. Sure, the entertainment complex is completely different, and it's not even relatable, but at the same time, to your point, everything's always online. Here you are, bitching about it on an always online service yes, exactly. that you won't be able to play a game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, you know, my, I get it, I though. It does tweet. suck. If you're locked out, you're locked out. Like, that know, does suck. I know. But guess what? Go touch some that's, fucking grass. Dude. That's world. <laughs> that's the world we live in, though. Like, I, I totally get it. You know, we've had pop, big, like, two in the past three months, like, power outages that lasted for, like, days. And, like, like we had, like, the one day we had no cell phone service for, like, three, four hours, yeah. too. And it was weird because I was, like, you know, my wife was at work, and I was, like, even though, like, 
And you think back 30 years ago, this was normal. You know, like I was just like, well, what if something happens at work? You know, and I can't reach, can't reach my wife. Mm-hmm. It, it, all these weird like thought processes started. But I was like, well, back in the day, that's just the way it was. If you couldn't reach him on the telephone and like a normal yeah. like landline tele, you had no contact. You went, you went to work and you came home at the end of the day, and that 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 was you that's when you talk. Kiss your kids on the forehead. That's when you talk. talk. You played right. Monopoly like how, how Simpsons. Was, whenever how was, power how was went school, out. Jimmy? You know, like that's it. <laughs> that's all you had. Oh man, it was, but like all weekend, it's just been people like, you know, naturally memeing on Xbox. Granted, there's probably an outage, the same local localized outage on PlayStation, like probably a week or a month before that. And naturally no one's going to talk crap about it. It's so interesting how like these things just pop up out of nowhere. Yeah. Like localized. I'm talking like you had to have been in like bum hell of nowhere, Kansas, remotest remote remote area to have like had the outage that's yeah. how localized it was like i remember all weekend i just sit up all night grinding elden ring and mm-hmm. just summoning people no big deal no problem yeah i know a friend of mine who he only will he's one of my lifelong friends i love him to death he will never ever in his entire life has he ever played more than one game at a time he, he will play that one game until he absolutely hates it beyond all belief but he will not try anything else and he's been going through this with apex for like the past year where he absolutely hates apex but he will not play anything else and it's been the last like month or two it's been really 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 bad like he rage quits Mm -hmm. every time he plays i hate this game i'm uninstalling it i'm never playing it again and uh oh my god you're exposing me mayor don't do this to me no no. no. (laughs) but then anyway during the xbox live out we're just talking about like you know like maybe we should take like a break from the game before the new season. So, you know, when we come in, you know, like if, and then like hates the game, hates the game. And then Xbox live was down. Texts us freaking out. Oh my God. Now I can't play. Cause Xbox lives down. It's like, dude, you hate the game anyway. <laughs> take a night off, go play, but he won't play anything else ever. Won't do it. I- kind of respect it like i wish i could do that or i could just stick to i'm actually doing that with the Elden ring at the moment but i wish i could just like stick to one game and like not play anything else so i know that i could complete the value of the game in time i have it well that's fine but i i mean like like he's played like five video games in the past like like he's played them for thousands of hours but he's played like five video games in the past 20 years like like not not like i'll only play it for two weeks until i finish it or like get every achievement or whatever like Literally, like he played SOCOM 2 until like they shut the servers down and he played like I don't know what was in between there. <clears throat> PUBG for like three years and now Apex for like three years. And he's got Xbox tens of thousands hates of hours. This guy. <laughs> Xbox thrives on people just like being a Game Pass subscriber, just downloading shit because they can. Yeah, but he, this guy in he particular, thinks Game Pass is dumb. Like stupid idea. Why would I ever what? do? Why would I ever do that? Blah blah blah. Because he only oh, is man. only ever gonna play one game. That he doesn't I mean, need the other. It makes sense for him if you think about it. Like retrospectively, he's just like, is he really gonna be playing all those games on Xbox Game Pass? Right. Why would I spend? Why would he spend money on it? Like he's kind of like rationalized it to his own experience. But he will. Sp- so. He will spend five hundred dollars on skins, but you know. <laughs> and then never revisit the game because he hated it so much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, what's the most I've ever spent on skins? Probably. Halo Five, I think, is most. Not even. But I bought you like play the Valorant. Backpack. Oh yeah, never mind. Yeah, Valorant, one hundred percent. Easily like five hundred dollars in the I, Valorant so I far. I don't even play it anymore. I don't play Valorant very often. Um, I, I do generally enjoy it. Um, but I I feel like such a plebeian when I play it because I have not a single skin on any of my guns. And I feel like people are just like watching me and like judging me. Like we you are. Know, all your all your skins progress. are just gunmetal gunmetal gray yeah no we absolutely do look at you we are judging you and we pray to god one day you get a job yeah oh yeah you can buy skin i have multiple <laughs> oh man but the drm stuff pretty interesting it 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 kind of like shed some light on like the the dystopian technical technological era that we live in yeah and how we need to be able to either embrace and accept or continue to just be so niche and complain about things on twitter until things change I, 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 I don't know. I, I definitely developed this. Well, I don't know if it was because of when I was in elected office or something, I had to like learn to like compartmentalize and, and cope with things. And I would just tell people like, is it something that you can control? Is it something that you can change? If the answer is no, 
maybe you shouldn't complain about it because but it's so much different whenever you can complain about it and you can get attention for it too well if it if it's something where actually getting feedback giving feedback you know like i that's mm -hmm. valid yeah. we all need to vent well for sure uh i will end it with this uh but don't let, let it whatever. consume your soul like don't like oh my god like forever you know like but then how can I be authentic about who yeah. I truly am here? Yeah. Uh, no, but I do want to end it with this. Like, whenever, like, these console things happen, you get to see the worst poorly attempted edits at creating memes, like, ever. <laughs> they are so fucking disgusting, dude. Like, they're just, they're ugly. They're not even funny Those at this point. Those are some of like, the best at times, though. No, I h highly disagree. Like, Honestly, like you just see like Jim Ryan and like Phil Spencer have like these weird Pinocchio noses and it's like them it's... holding like a game or something like that. And it's just like, Jesus Christ, is this? who is the 40 year old boomer making these memes just to try and like cope? I, you know, they're I, like console warriors have the worst memes. I've I had a moment today, life. though, where I truly felt like a boomer. And I just like I, this is literally the last thing I did before I just closed my laptop and left work because I felt like such an idiot. I was trying to I was trying to do something in Excel and it was like the simplest thing. I was trying to move, like create a column and move it into a, this one particular place. And I could not no matter what I did, it would not happen. And I'm like, I'm like Googling, you know, like how to move like Excel column or row, not column. I'm sorry. And, and like I'm following the thing. And no matter what I did, like I could not get it to work. So I literally just like I'm old. Microsoft Excel is too advanced for me now. Like I'm done with life. And I just like closed my laptop and I just like, all right, everybody, anybody need anything? Uh, nope. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm going home. Ended your day because you couldn't Excel. That's hilarious. Was, you was, want to know something even worse? It's time for me to go anyway. So I can make it worse for you. Cause you said that you went to like the web browser and you're like, look up how to like do it. Yeah. There's actually a built in search bar that will tell you how to do yeah, it. Inside of Excel. There you go. <laughs> I you can literally like, just type in control left, control left or something probably. Oh god, that's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> all right, Overwatch two. Let's let's do it. Um, oh, that's the second topic. <laughs> after an hour, yeah, we're on to the second topic. Um, so the there was a, a headline, and I'll give my thoughts on this for sure, and you can give yours. I don't want to. I don't. I don't know how to describe what I'm thinking right now. It was all over the place that uh, Overwatch 2 lost 99% of its Twitch viewership in like, like I think it was like six days or however many days it, it was. Um, and that was the headline everywhere. And this goes back to the thing we were talking about, like the last several weeks, the doom and gloom posting nonstop and the, you know, like the communities kind of, you know, or, or in this case, it's it's media. Um, so, I mean, do you want to do you want to give your thoughts on this first or you want me to give it? I mean, you go on. first. You go right. first. You can lead. So, if this has happened to like numerous games now, it constantly is this headline of like it loses its Twitch viewership. It loses its Twitch viewership, and you know, ninety nine percent, and it sounds crazy, and it is, but like it, it's such like a, it's a, such a cherry pick of like statistics, you know, because like this was a game that had one point five million concurrent Twitch viewers. But let's be fair, it, solely because it was giving. Twitch drops to get to get beta access, you know, and there's tons of people that watch Twitch literally only during something like that. Like they're not going to normally even watch streams. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, it dropped down to like 15,000 at one point, whatever that, you know, that article was was uh, was put together. And it's just like, well, I, I don't know what else you expect. You know, I saw that New World had Twitch drops. I remember the same articles coming out about New World, that it lost 80% of its viewership in, in like a week or two. And, yeah. you know, New World is one of those games you might actually be able to say dead game at this point. Um, but it's just becoming so common. I'm seeing yeah. all these doom and gloom that they lost its yeah. Twitch viewership. But it's like, well, it had 1.5 million concurrent viewers, which is like, I think it's a top 10 viewed stream of all time. Like, that was like a... So like, of course you're gonna. Same thing happens with player statistics, right? Like when a game first launches, and they're like, you know, in the first forty eight hours, I had five million players, and then, you know, two weeks later, now it's only got fifty thousand, and it's dry. It's declined by eighty percent. Well, of course, the hype from launch was massive. You know, like, I don't know. What what do you think of it? Like, is it is it telling about Overwatch, or is it more what I'm saying? I mean 
I, I think it's more of what you're saying, 100. percent It's just like you know, once people get those game keys, of course they're going to just stop playing, watching altogether. And, you know, it's so interesting that you bring it up with the Twitch viewership because I have this like debate with my team for work. It's just like, hey, let's run tournaments for Halo, and they're like, well, what's the viewership on Twitch? And I'm just like, not high. If anything, not it's amazing. definitely not like top 15, not even top 20. It's lower mm-hmm. than that, as a matter of fact. Um, and they're like, well, why would we run something like that? And I'm just like, well, we ran Valorant, and that's cons- consistently like top five, and we had nobody to register for those events. So why are we basing our numbers and statistics based off of Twitch viewership? He did bring up like, hey, well, what about like in-game uh, participation? And I'm like, well, we can only base it off of Steam. We cannot see Xbox numbers, yeah. but it's top ten on Xbox. I think so. Too, though some of those communities to I would you know counter that point too though is like because there are such large numbers for some of those games it's it's harder to like because there's there's so many things going into those communities and mm-hmm. games if you have a more niche tournament there might be more people looking for that not not, not yeah. more people but more people i don't know how to how to phrase it but i think you get what i'm saying i don't know what the what the transfer differences are between a twitch viewer and, and a player because yeah. like at this point like we need to be looking more at Twitch numbers for the value of like who the streamer is now, which goes back to our last week's topic about, Oh, all these people are moving over to YouTube because Twitch at this point, if a game is trending top, it's because it's got like a very valuable like content creator at the top of the list. So if I click on Valorant right now, I could see three pros. I could see, I could literally see Shazam from Sentinels on here right now. He's Mm -hmm. got over 14,000 viewers and like, as far as like when we look at these twitch numbers and we do any kind of comparison from viewer to player like they can't be the same they're not always going to be Mm -hmm. the same sure i would say majority of those viewers make up players but like what kind of player are they are they a casual player are they a hardcore player i mean when vampire survivors had a hundred thousand viewers on twitch it had been heard of by like 10 people total you know like up until that point you know like Sometimes the amount of viewers just because of one creator playing a game absurdly like will inject a giant influx of actual players. Mm-hmm. It, it, it makes sense. But I mean, that article to say like, yeah, like Overwatch has dropped. It's like viewership. Like you got to expect it for one. Yeah. Two, it's just like this is the same strategy that they did with Overwatch one, actually. Like they had a beta. Uh, they had it exclusively for Twitch drops. People finally figured out what Twitch was, and they're like, oh, this is what you could do with Twitch. I didn't know you could pl- watch a game just to get a game for free. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I, I'm not going to say that Overwatch 2 isn't, like, a bad game either. It definitely had its, like, issues, and it technically is it, to some capacity, to some degree, a 1.5 update from Overwatch 1, mm-hmm. um, especially for this beta. Like, you're definitely not going to be I seeing think, anything. I think not to interrupt you, but I, I, yeah. I totally think they should have... If they called this anything other than Overwatch 2, I think they would have been way better off. If they called it, like, Overwatch New Horizons, like, just gave it, like, a mm-hmm. subtitle, I think they totally would have been fine. Because yeah, then it does seem that. like an update. Whereas if they dub it a sequel like they did, then they've got people have this expectation that, you know, it's going to be a new game. Agree to disagree. I'm pretty sure that it quantifies as a sequel only because they have significantly more content to include with it. So, like... With the PvE in this case, and stuff. Yeah, PvE story and stuff like that. So it, it in all accounts, it really is a yeah. next it is another game. So yeah. but that's Blizzard. Blizzard's probably like the only business and the world like only developer in the world right now who can actually like still continue on with this like numbered value system because you yeah. don't really see that anymore. Yeah. Like they're literally the only ones. Them and I, it would technically be Valve, but Valve hasn't put out a number three anything in forever. I still think it it's weird that Bungie ran with Destiny two the longest yeah, time i, I was like just that. call it destiny at this point man like i agree with that i mean like it depends on the game like there's still numbered games out there that are still doing you know exceptionally exceptionally well not in the twitch viewership numbers but they're doing enough you know yeah. with their with their number system but i really hope to see that like overwatch can get back up to the top there um for work purposes to be honest i would love to do more overwatch stuff with work but you... at the same time have you played since the update where they they unlocked the um they unlocked the playlist with no roll queue and it like to, no. in, my, in my opinion it 100 percent fixes like almost all the complaints i had because the queues are like instant because you don't have to mm-hmm. wait for your roll and then two it just it goes back to that classic like what overwatch was kind of originally about which was like 
being creative with your team comps and figuring out, you know, like, you know, like this one team we came and it sounds crazy and stuff and you hope it doesn't become the meta, but one team just picked five tanks. And so my team the whole time was trying to figure out how do we counter this five tank comp and like that it's that to me that's more fun it, 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 it it's not competitive like it's not what you would want in like a you know a ranked game because you could mm -hmm. uh, there's tons of things that are exploitable with no limitations like that um but and just for for quick play i i improved everything tenfold because i could just play whoever character i wanted to play queue up instantly and generally um the player base i think I think this happens in a lot of games. The player base is generally smarter than I think developers often give it credit for because almost every single game with the no roll queue, we still had like, you know, somebody would play at least one tank. Somebody would play at least one healer. Like, like people wouldn't just play all DPS, you know, like people are like, oh, you got to give the player some credit for being able to think for themselves. Yeah. And like, you know, that goes back to like the bungee philosophy of things is that like once their players unlock something they didn't realize their game had a potential for, they support it too. Mm -hmm. yeah. <sighs> All Not right. Anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> Put, putting you on rails on this roller coaster. <laughs> Do you remember? I was, this is a random Gears of War fact. You remember that there was a leaked Gears of War like, prototype for Connect? There was a. No. Yeah, you should look it up. Some, they, they, they made a. Uh, a Gears of War game, well, like at least a demo for Connect. You can find actual video footage of it. You should check it out. You would enjoy it. On Rails, I think it was. On Rails? That's when you said it, that's what made me think of it. That's what they, uh, they actually had the Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary uh, Connect enabled too. You <laughs> can, funny. you would be able to unlock uh, like um, enemy data like any halo universe data that you wanted to and you could just like use your hands like spin the model around and stuff like that it That's was funny. just it's quality of life no one really cares about that to be yeah. honest but <laughs> hey you, you got it somebody made it somewhere um so I, I changed the order up on the agenda here real quick because we're talking about twitch viewership and player base and ups and downs for games so just today uh 1047 games and Splitgate, my buddies over there Made a big announcement. Uh, the new season of Splitgate Pro Series has six existing uh, professional gaming orgs participating in it. Um, yeah, and Salt PlayStation uh, Gaming is in there. Yeah, there's there's some quite quite large ones. And then uh, Twitch or Prime Gaming technically is like the new uh, primary sponsor, which is obviously a big deal since that's you know, literally a platform in itself. So they'll obviously give it a lot of uh, exposure, I'm sure. Um, but what do you think? I, I've talked about this game a lot. What do you think? You know, don't don't feel like you're going to hurt my feelings with no matter what you say, because I'm a I'm a Splitgate fanboy. Uh, what do you think is in the future for this game? Because it's a really small indie studio that's had like two, at least two giant booms in player base and then obviously contractions that that follow. So what do you make of this announcement? What do you think's in store for it? Uh got me man yeah um, that face was so amazing your facial expression this, right there so yeah uh, screenshot I, you know again like this is like probably like the third fourth topic that we brought up and it was like actually mentioned at work i tried bringing up splitgate as like an optional weekly event that we run mm -hmm. with paid prizes and stuff like that and legit my team just goes nope dead game yep there goes. and then today they announced like their pro series stuff and i was like okay we'll see yeah. um so i honestly like i hope that this you know is a good is a good thing to happen for the community mm -hmm. for the gaming scene because like they're right now gaming just feels so damn boring right now yeah. like on, aside from like you know a couple new games releasing that aren't even multiplayer related like it's pretty boring right now even yeah. with the halo 2 season update like i played it and i just completed my challenges and i was like well bye yeah. back to Elden ring and see that's what that's why i think not to insult it because i do think it's a solid game but blood hunt is getting like a ton of attention and a lot of, and a lot of players and i and i feel like and again, I don't want to slant it because it is a good game, but I feel like it's getting all that attention because people are really just looking for something new to play right mm -hmm. now. And, and it, it's coming like at that moment in time, you know, where it just kind of slid in there at a good time. There's also some really big streamers out there. You got Shroud, you got Timmy, you know, you got a pro player, two pro players, one from 100 Thieves also playing these games. Like they're yeah. absolutely dominating it right now. So people yeah. are just like watching them. Um, 
what this if this means that we can translate it into an actual competitive scene format we'll see i -hmm. haven't watched any gameplay um but we'll see what happens i mean like once shroud says something about it he could either kill the game he's an elon musk game he either kill the game or make it pop so yeah i know he's been posting clips from it nonstop. i mean he's got 20k viewers watching him play it right now it is a good it's got a lot of uh I still think it has pacing problems like the, the, the for the size of the map and this, the number of players and the circles, like the, mm-hmm. how fast they move. I, there's weird times because uh, it has high flying gameplay. Like you can climb every building and every structure. You can leap from like building the building like it's nothing like in Crackdown or something. And I, I that is, it is really fun. It is really liberating to play a battle royale with like crazy movement, like literally like you can just kind of like fly across this map and it's it's definitely uh interesting it looks looks pretty polished too i mean the game oh, is. is actually like extremely detailed and mm-hmm. it honestly looks like it plays pretty good so i'm actually like really captivated to yeah. see what that's like i th- i feel it. i can already feel it coming though this is gonna be one of those games in a month people are gonna be and saying I- dead, dead game no content no content because it's, it's from a small studio and i think this is their first game and they've obviously worked very hard to get it this far and they've done a great job and then you know what they do right now i guess is going to be um pretty pretty important for it i agree oh, well i mean like that's the thing and that, that's what makes steam such a great platform is that like you can release your game whenever you want and mm-hmm. this game isn't exactly ready to be launched like that's fine that's the point of you playing the game i think it's still in beta now no uh, it's actually a fully launched game t- at this time it came out and you know what's funny is the last time they lo- they launched this game basically before and I don't think they had intentions to end the beta. I think they planned for it to be like open release, you know, like like ongoing. And it literally, not to be a jerk, it pretty much almost literally died. Like like interest kind of dwindled after like three weeks. And then they're like, oh, yeah. we're going to close the servers and work on it and then release it again later. And it seems to have worked because interest in it now is, is really high and stuff. But I, I just, I, you know. For their sake, I'm concerned the history might repeat itself because I don't think it's changed all that much since the last time. They just seem to have gotten more attention this time. Well, it's free to play, so I'm yeah. definitely going to be giving it a shot. Why not? Like Only on PC and PS5, it. by the way. Only PS5? That's interesting. Or maybe PS4, too, but not Xbox. Very interesting, actually. Okay. okay. I, see, I see a Steam. <laughs> How do I get duplicate? Let me see here. I'm on my iPad right now, so I don't, I don't have to be, like, between Trying my Trying to download mind. it or something? No, no, I'm just looking at it, just reading a little oh, okay. bit about it on the Steam charts and stuff like that. It's got mostly positive reviews, too, so... Um, I mean, as far as, like, this... To your point about, like, why does this game have so much more than Split Gate? I mean, like, Split Gate's problem was that, like, it just didn't have consistency in the, uh, in the messaging, and that's because it's another small studio. Mm-hmm. Like, honestly, could not have told you if I've heard about Blood Hunt until, like, honestly today. Yeah. Or until somebody tweeted about it for my work and they're like hey what about blood hunt dude turn it to blood hunt and i'm like oh okay whatever yeah i've never heard of that let me move on um and now here it is sitting at like one of the top 10 games being streamed right now probably yeah because of shroud and timmy though it's not pretend like that's yeah. actual organic yeah but in this case it's just like wow all right this game's doing pretty good but compared to Splitgate, you know between these two they're probably both so small they're small Split- studios that they can't Split- fathom K- doing literally for it went from 300 players to like 3 million in like the span of like 14 days like last summer like that's something you can't plan for and it was also a game developed by four people so you know it's just yeah i mean we, we see, we see college students we see triple a titles fail with their you know we're talking about triple a games failing with their content pacing and content updates and not being able to keep up imagine being an indie studio or just it being your studio's first game like blood done um you know, it's and player expectations are obviously through the roof. Well, it looks like they hit 40k followers uh, as of like four hours ago, three hours ago. Yeah. Mm, I mean, like overall, like their content is pretty, pretty stale. But overall, look at that. They've already got a tracker up for the game. What do you look at? Right, current players? No, I'm just seeing. looking at the Twitter right now. Oh, OK, OK. I have nothing to say, by the way. My brain is just... That's okay. (laughs) 
the hamster let's, is spinning. Let's talk about Apex for a minute. So season 13 of Apex comes out tomorrow. Tomorrow, baby. Are you excited? Because the your, your reaction. I'm excited says, to yes. get the hell out of Kings Canyon, bro. Oh no. It is literally the Philippines of Storm Apex, Point bro. is get the worst out. battle royale map ever made. Trash. It's okay, look. Maybe I would Miramar rather take and Storm PUBG Point. is worse. I would rather take Storm Point and Kings Canyon. And the, I, I hate Storm Point just the same, but like if I had to choose between both evils, it would be Storm Point. Because Storm Point one, my friend made a good point about this, and I tested it. The game like Storm Point Storm Point feels significantly more optimized in everything from visuals even to audio. I feel like I hear a better audio in Storm Point than yeah. in Kings Canyon. Like whenever Wraith is the banana watch, feet, and I think people are near me all the time. <laughs> Whenever I like uh, think of like, or whenever I'm playing in Kings Canyon, there's like a wraith around me. You can't hear her. I know she's there, but you can't hear her. And I'm, I'm using these bad boys too. These are like really good headphones. I'm listening I can't to Doc hear. too much. The audio, the audio. I mean, he's right. Though. The audio is trash. I mean, he says since that about this every game, game came though. out, oh no, he does say that about every game. But I will, I actually will say this because I've been playing this game since it came out, and Doc also launched the game. Yeah. Um, but like the audio has been consistently trash. Someone mm. made the maybe an example the other day saying like Halo Infinite is so bugged that I can't play it and I will no longer play it because of how buggy it is. I'm going back to Apex. And I'm like, my dude, that game has the worst, if not the same amount of bugs and issues it has that had, Halo does. It has had that hit marker bug for like 10 seasons now where you shoot yeah. and it makes the shield sound like you hit them. But yeah. no, no, no damage. No damage. Like, no, no but, it's there's dead damage. There's no damage yeah. to it. There's actually proof that there's no damage to it. So frustrating. And then like slide canceling or not slide canceling, but like sliding, like there's dead slides where you should be getting a full slide, but it doesn't slide. You got audio issues. You got the hit marker. You get the hit sounds just overall. And like the game still crashes on you. Yeah. And not to mention every time this game comes out with a new season, it cr like it's an actual Something... clown fiesta. Some the stupidest things break Apex. It reminds me of PUBG, like in that regard. And it's way yeah. more polished than PUBG. I I don't mean it as like slander, but like it's always something ridiculous. Like like a character's new skin will crash the entire lobby for players. Like if somebody has a particular skin equipped, or like I remember like it was that um they did like what was that event? They did an event where they had like seven different modes. They were only active for like one or two days each. It was like a year or two ago. And like they launched it and it, it turned out like two or two or three of the modes out of the like five were completely broken and had to be removed from the event. It was like, mm -hmm. how, how like did nobody play test this? Like, I don't know how this happens. You know, like it's it's got to be some like deployment problems. And like, I'm pretty sure at this point, Respawn has accepted that they're never going to be able to perfectly launch anything day one yeah I, I i remember whenever new seasons would come out i was last time i started like when i stopped playing it was around like season eight or nine one of the two and i was pretty much there for each three of those six seven eight or seven eight nine tens whatever the hell i remember being there for those and like my first two season updates just the first week was just god awful like yeah. just constant crashes constant server issues so much dc delay lagging blah blah, blah you name it the whole everything is there and I got to a point where it's like, I'm just going to skip the, this week for the new season. Yeah, yeah. And just not play the following week. day or whatever. I am not going to jump into ranked on the quality that this is. And you can never, you will never catch me playing public games, public mm -hmm. lobbies in Apex. Don't waste my time. <laughs> I don't care about the, I literally don't give a shit about the battle pass or the challenges that Apex has to give mm -hmm. me, to be honest. This is the only game where I don't care about it. Yeah. Every other game, I'm like, all right, I got to complete those Apex. Everything is not valuable to me. I just want to slay. I want to get as high to as I honest, can on that ranked leaderboard. I, I've always said this too. 95% of the skins in Apex, both character and weapon, are underwhelming. Like, I feel like they yeah. do not do... And I'm not saying that they're like... They're not something that you look at and you're like, oh, I got to have that. Like, they just... They, oh, there's stuff I look at and I go, oh, that's dog shit. Oh yeah, totally. Like, <laughs> like not like, straight up bad, but even their good ones are, are nowhere near like this, like like what Fortnite or Call of Duty, um, you know, any of those other, even Overwatch. Like, dude, how has like Apex still not? We've talked about this before. How has Apex not contributed to like any cool collaborational effort with any no. brand? No, like Call of Duty's not even stupid, EA's own of, like, Godzilla and King Kong. Not even like, yeah, you know, they, they, I think they put like a Mass Effect gun charm in the game at one they point. They did. Like, it, it, yeah. It's like, like, why do we not have like actual like Dead Space, like, you know, like, or Mass Effect, anything? I mean, it could be. You know anything. what? 
I have a theory. Maybe it's because all of these studios that are owned by EA are all bitter children at each other because <laughs> Daddy, because Papa EA will only pay, play favorites with so many of, of of their studios. So I'm pretty sure the FIFA and Madden teams get all the love. Yeah. While everybody else gets like pretty much shot. They're in the losing foot FIFA though. Oh, kick a rock. I heard that. They right? are losing, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about that. They yeah. are losing FIFA. Um. Oh. But yeah, I mean, like, yeah, as far as like the games go in terms of just like their collaboration efforts for their skins, still dog shit. Yeah. Apex has been my main game for like literally since the day it came out. And I'm starting to get, I've had my ups and downs with it, like any game, like everybody does, you know, but I'm really starting to get concerned for the future of it. And, you know, th there's a lot of things that I've criticized about the game, like the, the, the pacing of updates and stuff, I think is a little on the slow side sometimes. I've hated their ranked system for a long time. Um, but, and they're, they're changing that this season. Kudos, they're trying something new. The, the main thing that I'm concerned about, A, I hate that there's no new gun two seasons in a row, but but B, the bigger problem I'm concerned with is the power creep, which is like basically what eventually killed over, like Overwatch 1 was like it became the character abilities became so powerful and central to the game that like the shooter aspects were lost. It was all shielding and stuns and stuff. You know, I, we're we're seeing that with characters like like Valk, who are just like mandatory, like Valk out, alt, Valk out, alt, Valk. It's like nonstop Valk, Valk out, alt. And now, um, you know, Newcastle, like he's gonna be so annoying to play against. He has so many shield shield defensive abilities, and I think like if you couple that with like a Gibraltar and like like a lifeline or something like that, like that squad is gonna be so annoying to try to kill. There's gonna be mm -hmm. so many forms of damage. Uh, shielding reduction heals um I, I i'm getting concerned because like and people have memed on this for a long time that a lot of the new characters that come out in apex compared to like the original characters like makes the original characters look brain dead you know like you know valk's got like an alt that can get her out she can literally hover through the air she's got like a stun like tactical ability when she's flying she literally spots other squads then you've got octane who's like i run fast you know, like, like you know, like all these other characters. Yeah, you know, Seer was really uh, deep and complex and overpowered when he first came out. They nerfed him, um, but I, I'm I'm getting worried that that's gonna kind of happen. Where like the game's gonna just become about like these crazy freaking team compositions that are where the the actual like gunplay is kind of secondary, which would be very unfortunate because Apex's gunplay is amazing in my opinion. I just hope that the mode is enough or the mode, the, the update is enough to keep my community uh, comp at, at my work because we've been slowly dropping off the trail end of like losing players and stuff like that. I don't think it's because of Apex's fault. I'm pretty sure it's definitely the business side of things. But like, I would say that like, I hope well, this update doesn't kill. Too. Yeah. And no one wants to play it. Yeah. yeah. Um, or they, it's not that no one wants to play. They also want to like spend that time probably grinding out whatever they can on ranked. Mm -hmm. Um, but um yeah, I mean like I hope I hope this is a good seasonal update. ALGS, I've seen a couple of concerns from some pros. Um I don't They're nerfing really the Kraber have... too. Oh no. Oh no, the Kraber that I could barely get my hands on to begin with. I know, that's always um, pissed me off too. Yeah, I feel like they like one hundred percent like just don't care about the Kraber just wanted out. And uh, honestly, like I've never seen the Kraber be such a game changer these days anymore either. Because that's just me though. It's not I know uh, pro, pros complain about it because it, they don't feel that it's fair. And I saw Shiv FPS today, you know, upset that it got nerfed because he said none of us asked for it to be nerfed. We asked for it to be removed from from pro and competitive lobbies because it's just like, you know, one shot headshot in a professional game, you know, is like Apex. Um, they feel it's not like it has no place. But in pub games, I feel like it should. I'm not saying they should be all over the place, but there should be multiple cravers and dropping in every single game like why would you design such a cool like powerful weapon and then make sure players don't get to use it you know what i mean like we're gonna make a weapon that's so awesome everybody's gonna want it and you're never gonna be able to use it like bugs me i agree i the that's what made like i feel like snipers have just like are no longer fun anymore valorant sniping is mm -hmm. fun though don't get me wrong but Snipers, like, ever since, like, Halo 3 came out, Snipers Dude. just haven't been the same. I, I, I miss it so much. Like, that was my jam. Like, that, I was the sniper. But, like, Halo yeah. 2, 
you know like i was always the guy that got the sniper like my team just knew like yeah like let 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 ryan get it you know like mm-hmm. that kind of thing and i'm not saying i was the best sniper ever but i loved it yeah. and I, I was good at it and PUBG. We're power hungry for it, man. PUBG, I love. Oh, dude, sniping. No, PUBG sniping was actually pretty dope. I yeah. love getting the car ninety eight and, like, and just like popping in domes, Apex, dude. I feel like it's ninety five percent of the time it's like a hindrance if you're carrying a sniper rifle. Like it's not not great, especially because it's powerful. Like the rampage has been, and you can just shoot that thing for miles. Like why would you bother with a sniper rifle when you can just shoot the rampage for miles and only have to reload every twenty minutes? They're nerfing the L Star too, which boggles my mind. They're nerfing the L Star this season. <laughs> Already a trash tier gun that nobody uses, and they're nerfing it. Oh, that gun is is pretty powerful. We should probably do something about it. Yeah, only it's so powerful that 05 percent of players ever pick it up in a match. All right, I'm gonna skip this uh, esports org ranking thing unless you want to talk about it. It was the Forbes article that came out. No, I'm good with that one yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Like I saw it. I mean, like, I'm not surprised Stage Clan was up there. I'm not surprised One Hundred Thieves was up there. I mean, like, at this point, esports is not about the games that you play. It's at this point how much money you make. Yeah. And TSM making... and Oh no, TSM was like number up there, one. At, was number one. Face Clan was on the bottom. I'm, I was incorrect. Thank you. Um, but like it's about who makes the most money these days. And like honestly, the like brand deals. For for anybody who doesn't know, video games make literally almost zero to nothing dollars and it's surprising to see any kind of successful gaming organization actually make money because you're these not people gonna aren't make your making money games. on tournament winnings either yeah you're never gonna make money off of tournament winnings like all of that is quite literally just brand and organization awareness to the point where you get people to pay you and that is hard as hell <laughs> mm-hmm. like the reason why tsm's so up there is because of their cryptocurrency stuff yeah they got like a what was that deal worth? Ten billion? FTX, yep. Something like that per year. It was an absurd amount of money per year. Ridiculous amount of money. And all they wanted, all they want is for TSM to put the FTX yep. in their name. <laughs> That's all they want. They don't give a shit what they do. They just want them to put whoever is Traditional the TSM brand CEO is like literally sitting back saying, do whatever the hell you want. I well, don't care. Did you see the same same week? I think it was Bloomberg, not Forbes. An article came out about all the abuses of TSM CEO. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, that's, that was the thing, Who's too, Who's laughing actually. to the bank right now, like, you know, you know like, <laughs> whatever, dude, I just cashed a check for however much money, so. Bloomberg is such an interesting place. I'm not a super huge fan of Jason Schreier, personally. I think what he does is often, like, good work. I mean, mm-hmm. he does expose, like, a lot of the the horrors of video game design you know yeah. we would not know about any of this blizzard activation stuff if it wasn't for yeah. him the more that he does but he's probably like killed more things pos- he's probably had more cons and pros than anything and he's, it's not um, to say like they're measurable in weight but his book uh he's got several of them i think i can't remember is it called game over i think it's game over i think it's called game over yeah that 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 is a really really good read um, I highly recommend that to anybody interested in game development because it's not a it's true stories. It's like firsthand takes of like the developers. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and he doesn't like it's not like a hit job. It's it's more like it, in the case of that book, at least the way it's presented is very much like this is how much we had to like the crazy stories of how we made this game like come together or or not of like why it got canceled. Mm-hmm. And it, it's more just like amazing than like a hit job of like you know um there's definitely plenty of hit pieces that come out on the gaming industry but the the way that that book is presented which has been out for years now it's just really really good because some some of the stories are not even like uh, i can't remember a certain one that's like culture um but like publishers canceling a game after it's been worked on Roxy Foxy Boxy with the four subs. Damn. I think that's our first sub we've gotten on the podcast. Maybe. Man. Maybe. <laughs> By the way. Let's go. Oh, yeah. By I mean, way- we're not going to see that money, but let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the sub, Roxy. Um, Maz, you got to get in the chat right now and say thank you. <laughs> yeah. Did you see his comment earlier about. Uh, remember, we were talking when I said put Battlefield. Or I, put, I said put Halo Infinite and all the Halo games in the same app. Maz put Battlefield did that this year and it detracted from the new game. I get what he's saying, but I would say that the the new game was the problem in that case. It, the problem in that case was that the old games 
were just so Not much bad. better than the new game. The new game was absolute. Yeah. And then they're putting that game on Game Pass, I think, also. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was coming. You I mean, might if it's as not, well if at this Game point. Pass, it'll probably just go to EA Play, which yeah. is, you know, a Game Pass thing. You might as well. I mean, I want to complain really quick. I don't like the way EA Play works on game on PC with Game Pass because you don't get any of the achievements. You just download it mm. through the EA Play system and like, you don't get any. Like, I would play the absolute hell out of like majority of those games. Yeah, there just, you go, Maz. I just want to complain about EA Play. Period. End of end of statement. It's actually not bad. What do you mean? It's not a bad deal at all. It's I, like I, ten I, bucks for three months. Maybe this makes me like the huge corporate over, overlord or whatever. I I hate that EA has their service. Ubisoft has their service. Like I I would rather fewer services. Like Xbox has their service. Sony has their service. You know, just just I would prefer. Like, Ubis. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not I'm not. I'm good, man. I'm good. This this is this is your show, not not my show. I'm good, man. Um, I was just kidding, by the way. Witchy had Nemesis. some. Go ahead. Oh wait, wait, no, no, never mind, never mind. Witchy chimed in with her thoughts on Apex in there, in there too. But Valk is annoying. Octane players, the ones that run in first, die, leave, have to super slippery. Yeah, no, I like all of those are pretty I hate annoying. The Honestly, thing like. Too. I love Valk. I don't give a hell. Like if I had to face against her, I'd literally and they see them ult out and like I would do the same. <laughs> I just I just don't like that it's become so central to the game to the game, especially in competitive. Like Bro, I would marry Loba. <laughs> for obvious reasons. Because she could put her black market out and I could just steal stuff from people's houses. That's why. <laughs> that, that's the obvious reason? Yeah. That's the obvious reason. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh <laughs> anyway. Um did you, uh, did you see the reveal of the Warcraft mobile game? Yeah, dude. What you make was... of it? That's cool. Yeah, you think it looks good? Yeah, yeah, I think that looks. I think that's an awesome idea. I mean, like, definitely like a shot in the dark with these mobile games. Like, I so interesting. Every time like a mobile game is announced and it's like a North American based company, it's just like, well, that's not going to do well here. But I'm pretty sure everybody in China is going to have fun. Yeah, I'm actually. From what I've heard, uh, it's been in development for a really long time, and they've Blizzard is, has historically been at their best when they take something that's not really their idea, like a genre that's kind of you know already blowing up or getting popular, and then they just like release a super polished, kind of iterated version of it. Like they add their own little spin. That is when Blizzard has been, you know, World of Warcraft was not the first MMO, but they looked at EverQuest and they looked at you know all those things, and they're like, all right, well we're gonna you know, just make it a little bit different and mm -hmm. just polish the hell out of it and make it really charming. Hearthstone was not the first ever card game, but, you know, we're going to polish it. Turned out to be pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah. They Star made it very charming in Hong Kong. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> but I, I do think it's interesting. We, mobile gaming is changing a lot. And, like, for, for I think it's probably like the first year ever where I can say, like, there's like three mobile games coming out this year that like I'm like actually like looking forward to like yeah, Apex Mobile, Diablo, Diablo Immortal and Warcraft. And there's probably a few others, too. But like, I feel like it's starting to become more into the hardcore gaming space. And I think that's a good thing. I think it is. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I, I think it is. I think it's a good thing. Not to mention uh, Fortnite on mobile gaming for xCloud. Like, that's yeah. a <laughs> Did crazy you did you hear the conspiracy theory that that was why Xbox Live went was was down because so many? Oh, dude, I guarantee it. So many people were playing Fortnite on XCloud. That was what people were saying. No, one hundred percent, dude. I think I've shared it before, but I'll say it again. Whenever I was working at Microsoft, I was on an insider build for this for XCloud, and like one time they like did something so minuscule and small that it literally broke all of Xbox Live. Like that was a <laughs> that was an actual outage because they did something to XCloud. Like that's an app. Like I would not doubt that's what happened. Well, you know, I'm pretty sure respawn changed like the color of a of the red reticule by like three, uh, three like little three pink. Yeah, and that that broke an entire, you know, week of the game. So when I look at Apex at a development standpoint, I definitely I don't look at it the same way I see like Fortnite. When I look at Fortnite, I imagine the most the well-oiled machine executive businesswoman ever like she's got her coffee cups labeled for each day of the week she's got 
all this phenomenal, you know, on point, get to it as soon as you can work mentality. And I look at Apex and I look at like a hoarder, <laughs> like who hasn't like cleaned their house like the past 10 See, years. That's what that's what bothers me. And, and I don't. But I think what Respawn has in their head is is clearly. It, it's the same thing that I think the you know the gears developers have had and the same thing the halo developers has had but not as bad so like they look like everybody's asking themselves how do we make our games last for 10 years how do we make our games last for 10 years so they plan out like well we're gonna release this then we're gonna release this then we're gonna release this and that is what you absolutely should do you should have a roadmap but like things get overlooked and people stretch it out and they start to realize like like, you know, there's features or things that we should release to get people excited, to keep hype high, and to give them content that they don't. For example, you mentioned Delta Squad at launch of, of Gears 5. You know, like, like yeah, no, duh. Like, and if you thought that you were going to hold that for two years because, oh, hey, we need to release something in two years, not a great idea. You know, like, Halo Infinite, I feel it's like the same way. They're like, well, we need to make this game last for 10 years, so let's take our updates and spread it out over 10 years. Well, no, you can't really do that you know let's make six month seasons you know, i think like, you can but you know whenever you develop the game you know probably do better at it but you know, there's a way to do it and there's a way not to do it right like like you said like if the if what do they call them the drop pods or whatever if those are if those are sick then it's fine you know like, well the drop pods are probably like a last second you know idea just yeah. to keep just to communicate hey we've got stuff coming in the next six months because we anticipated everyone not going to like what the next yeah. announcement's going to be yeah. that's what i'd imagine it was like I, i'm still like sold on the idea that like halo and there's actually i think there's been leaked screenshots from mint blitz mint blitz um he's a halo uh, content creator mm -hmm. he like showed that like halo started development and since like late 2018 and like mm -hmm. there's like images of proof of that and stuff like that um, but I'm I was sold on the idea that they didn't start development on Halo Infinite until like middle of 2018 to the end of mm -hmm. 2018, and then like obviously like the pandemic hit, so they were like pushed even further yeah. behind. Yeah. So it's just Halo was just wrong place, wrong time in the universe, you know. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm sold on. I'm pretty sure there was incompetencies within the studio that made that I'm happen sure. too. Yeah. Like no no perfect anything, but at the same time like should it have there not been covid i would imagine like everybody else in the world would be in a completely different place yeah i mean i've i've heard that about the most recent world of warcraft expansion too shadowlands which is basically like a giant disaster in numerous ways that there there came a point where like they they wanted to change course because they knew what they were doing wasn't going to like land but because they were all working remotely and still trying to figure out it was like wrong place wrong time like we've built so much of this game around this thing like we we don't now have time to go back and fix it like unless we get like working this way we'll need like another year and that will never happen like we don't have another year we have like four months you know and bobby kotick was never gonna allow that like you know ship it ship it and they basically that the director had came out recently and spoke candidly for like the first time ever pretty much they usually blizzard normally speaks in like pr speak and was like we we pretty much just like stopped trying on this last expansion and put like minimal resources into it and just started on the next one because we knew this one was like we we did our best with it but we knew it was like you know not dead on arrival but we knew it was flawed and there if we wasted all of our time trying to fix that you wouldn't be able to get what comes next at the level that we wanted to deliver it so is what, what it is. is yeah game development be hard like that yeah true uh, Roxy, we talked about the Apex patch notes. Some some weird weapon stuff in there we were talking about. I'm personally scared of what uh, Newcastle might do to the game. Um, but I don't know. We'll we'll find out. I, I'm personally hating that we have to play more with even more focus on Stormpoint, and I'm even more wor worried that 50 people are going to be jumping into one spot on Stormpoint now every single match, and the whole rest of the map is going to be a dead zone. But do we know what map is next, actually, in this split? Ranked? Yeah. They haven't said, but people are pretty much deducing that it's uh, World's Edge. Perfect. I, I think World's Edge is a great map. But World's Edge is the best map. No, Olympus is the best map, in my personal opinion, but World's Edge is like a very, very, very close World's Edge is very, very well balanced, yeah. It's, yeah. The current version of it is very good. Don't do that to me, Roxy. I will... 
are those like favorite maps or is that what the actual rotation is for the splits is it storm i think point she's first? saying that's the rotation yeah storm point and then world's edge okay yeah I that also... means i'm gonna be well i'm gonna be stuck on storm point for like the first 10 minutes without any encounters and ranked i i think olympus is in this season on the normal rotation though i'm pretty sure it is Kink kinks is the only one that's out they also said they changed the uh, the t way their timer works, and they're no longer doing two hour rotations for any map because they feel. Witchy, do you want to fight? Do you live in San Antonio? We can meet up somewhere, yeah. and we can actually have a physical altercation. I I'm with her. It's my favorite map. I don't care. I don't care. It's my favorite map. Not saying it's the most balanced. Not saying it's just. <laughs> Let's see if he comes back. He's gonna make me wait. I'm on both. Oh God, you screwed up the OBS now. I think it's working. I think it's. There we go. There we go. Fighting. I've words. never been, like so attacked and so physically. Nobody angry. attacked you. It doesn't have to affect me. I'm selfish like that. It's it's just bad opinions. Bad opinion. Nobody took any issue with your opinion, but you were attacked. Because my opinion is correct. <laughs> Uh, believe it or not, people have preferences in life that's not the same as other people. And it's okay to have wrong preferences. You just need to be told that they're wrong. <laughs> Look, I would agree with you that King's Canyon was good if they brought back Skulltown. That's it. I 100% think that removing... I, I understand the thought process behind, like, oh, hey, we're gonna... And I don't necessarily think it's right, but other games have done it, too. Like, Fortnite blew up Tilted Towers, you know, like... They want to change where people land. They don't want people to keep going to the same spot. But Skull Time A was awesome. Um, and B, I think, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It's so weird that they're pushing to make bigger and bigger maps, like with, especially with Storm Point. Storm Point's way bigger than any of their other maps. But then they haven't like filled in that bottom portion of King's Canyon that they that they blew up again. They're like keeping it that same size. And I feel like, especially with all the criticism of King's Canyon, that they wouldn't try to you know, kind of adjust it. And it's been leaked that Skulltown is coming back, by the way. It's it's in the... It's, it was in that two-year leak that came out. Yeah. Look, there's just so much more to land now in the map. Like, just obliterating it completely off the map is just... I disagree with it significantly. Like, adding more or at least changing? Good mm. idea. That's fine with me. But just, like, completely removing it. Like, that, I have the same sentiment about Tilted Towers, to be honest. Like, I get it. Yeah. Like you've added more, you've changed the map significantly right. at this point. It's just like, right. why not just put it back in there? Like, it's yeah. just the well, Lego they did. Piece. Yeah. The next map is the moon map, which I'm curious to see because Storm Point's been criticized a lot too. So I'm curious to see what their design philosophy behind this new moon map is. If it's going to kind of be like a middle sized map or, you know, just I'm interested. Yeah. We shall see. Oh, shit. Mayor wants them to add Star Wars skins to Apex. I mean, they probably will because Respawn makes that uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and they're making a sequel. I'm kind of surprised we didn't get more overlap between that. Probably costs a lot for that license, so. Uh, all right, so stuff coming out this week or including next week. Uh, Evil Dead the game comes out this week. Are you an Evil Dead fan? No. I'm no. Not 60 years old. <laughs> Well, it's like a cult classic. I mean, anybody That's can go why back I'm not, and watch I'm not it. six years old. I'm not part of the cult that was formulated that can't, time ago. Can't watch old movies? No, I can, love, I can watch old movies. I, I actually just never really grew up with Evil Dead. Yeah, I, I, I'm not like a fan. I was exposed to it. I watched them, but I didn't. Bruce Campbell's pretty hilarious, but I don't, I don't think He's this game things. stands a chance and... It's like a Dead by Daylight type game. I don't think it'll that's, go anywhere. That's what I was going to say. Well, honestly, Dead by Daylight actually pops pretty hard, actually. Like, that's got, like, a very quiet community that's, like, actually, like, massive. Yeah. Like, oh, even yeah. the people, like, the people I would expect to not ever play video games play video games. The player base is big. Yeah. That game. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes, like, the content that it makes on streams is pretty fun, too. They did a Stranger Things crossover. I mean, that's pretty cool. They've done an everything crossover, yeah. bro. Yeah. <laughs> everything. <laughs> Far Cry did a Stranger Things crossover, which is strange. Far Cry, I never heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. There was like a tweet, a tweet game. Ubisoft put out that said uh, you could keep only one game, which is it. And it's just like, obviously, the correct answer is Far Cry 3. 
I love yeah. Far Cry 3. Far Cry 3 was great. The only but Far Cry I... game that I really, like, loved was Blood Dragon. Yeah, Blood Dragon was pretty dope, too. That was a really good expansion. I heard Primal was good. I didn't play that one, though. Yeah. Obviously, like, all the Far Cry games are technically good. It's just level of taste. Like, Far Cry 4 was not as crazy cool as Far Cry 3, but it was pretty deep, like, in the politics and stuff. Like, that it's, was actually pretty crazy. And plus, you had Troy Beaker as the It's as typical the Ubisoft, though, where they're, they're retreading, like, a lot. Like, you know, if you've kind of, like, if you played one Far Cry, you played them all. Mm -hmm. but I, that's speaking for somebody who hasn't played the you're last three or four Far Cry's, but... No, you're not wrong. I mean, like, it, it's hard for me to, like, look at that. Look at my dog, dude. Yeah, he, uh, he, it's hard she for me was to, going like... nuts back there with one of her toys, like, ten minutes ago. Like, like... <laughs> Yeah, it's her squirrel. Yeah. It's her baby. Where's your baby? Where's your baby? Where's your baby? Who's your baby? There it is. Good girl. <laughs> Good Wholesome girl. podcast moment. Um... No, but like every every Far Cry technically really is the same for me to like spend money on that. I'm just like I'd just rather seventy rather bucks. Not. Yeah, seventy bucks for that. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure which one that. I think I think that's the one Jade is talking about. Yeah, three. Far Cry three, the Jackal. I don't remember that name. I don't know any of their names. I know the actors that portray. Boss. Boss is the only thing Boss I took away three, from Far Cry right? three. Yeah. Boss is three. Yeah. All right. Um. The V Rising Early Access also starts next week. I put it on there this week because I knew I would not remember it next week. It is Sunlock Studios' new game. It's kind of like a survival action RPG. It's, it's can be compared to Valheim. Um, did you play Battle Right at all? That was Sunlock Studios. No. Battle Right is pretty good. It's an underrated yeah. MOBA, to be honest. Yeah. Speaking of uh, Valheim team, whatever, uh, I saw The Northman. That's pretty good. I don't know if you're interested in that, but I know I am interested in that. It's like another one of those hidden gem movies where it's just like it's not it's not a Marvel movie. It's not a superhero movie. It's not a Disney movie or anything like that. It's just its own kind of experience. So I actually do want to see it. Did you watch that director's other two movies? Uh, the Which Witch ones? or The Lighthouse? The Lighthouse, it had um, Twilight Guy in it, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I've been wanting to see that one too. Oh that my a, god, that's a good suggestion. That's like one of my top ten favorite movies of the past decade. It's so good. Like it's it's yeah. it's bizarre. It's truly bizarre, but it's it's like a must watch. I try to recommend it to so many people, and like nobody ever watches it. So please watch it and tell. No, I definitely want to. Think. Like I've seen nothing but good things about that movie. Have you um, seen anything good lately, movie or TV movie wise? wise? Yeah. Well, either um. One. God, no. I can only say bad things about Halo. And that's it. I. <laughs> I mean, like, as far as anime goes, there's been some pretty cool popping animes that are just, like, in its second to third season right now that are pretty cool. So there's this one called uh, Kaguya-sama Love is War. Uh, Kaguya-sama is the name, and it's about... High, it's, a, it's, a romantic, it's a romantic comedy. And it's just... What's so great about it is that, like, it's just so fresh of, like, comedy and, like, ideas on, like, how you could do stuff. Like, the last episode was about... The man who's about... offended by the name drop of King's Canyon is talking about romantic comedy anime. Dude, rom-coms are, like, my favorite anime, -com like, anime genre ever. Oh, my gosh. I love rom-coms, dude. Like, rom best rom-com ever I could talk about that's an actual, like, real person movie is probably Employee of the Month. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is. With, with Dane Cook and Jessica Simpson? It's got Andy that's, Dick in quite, there too. that's quite the cast there. <laughs> Holy yeah. crap. It was it's such a bad movie, but like it's so stupid with like the jokes that it has. It's about people who work at basically a um like a super center and like all the stuff that they do in there is just like stuff that you would expect out of a kid. They've got like this macaroni uh break room that's like full of, like macaroni boxes and stuff like that. Uh that you could get up by taking the forklift to get inside um and then um how to lose a guy in 10 days was awesome yes um but no play the month I, was awesome i gotta join i gotta jump on this trend of shutting off my camera in the middle of the podcast like jade i oh, did i didn't shut off my camera i just straight up left oh, okay. um <laughs> uh but no i mean like as far as kind of gets on that's been pretty cool so far uh what else um we me and potato were watching something i forgot what else we were watching it's just i'm, I'm excited thinking about kaguya sama um, dude, what the frick are we watching? You? Yeah, I forgot what I'm watching, man. Crunchyroll. 
show called The Simpsons. It's this new show called The Simpsons that just came out. Simpsons is trash now, dude. I don't. I've never. I've never even watched this. Like barely. You I, never. Okay. But I just fine. watched. I got. A, I got a weird one for you. Oh, uh, Spy Family. Duh. Holy crap. I don't know why I couldn't get that's wholesome as hell. It's about a spy. The best spy in the world has to uh, infiltrate this school system to like kill somebody because you're a major player in the politics. And he adopts this child at an orphanage who has the ability to like has telepathy, uh, and she won't tell anybody. And then he to get her into the school, it's like a prestigious school, and they're like, you gotta be married. You can't have any kind of like broken family stuff going on. So he ends up marrying unintentionally to benefit her a, a the world's best assassin. I would love. And, is this an anime? Yeah, it's an anime. So I, I would, and not only for anime, but you, I guess generally with anime i would really love to know and i don't mean this in a judgmental way to be in the writer's room when somebody is putting together this concept that you just like just like broke out you know, like explained like like how did they even conceive of that you know what i mean like how did those ideas actually get like that's what's great about invented it bro. And interwoven and like i don't know it's that's crazy. what's great about anime versus like what we can like comprehend on like what the typical like tv show is in america like Literally everything is like a law and order ripoff or it's like some edgy attempt to like be like anime, like Halo, I guess in this case, or uh, that one movie where like Satan is a human on the planet or something like that. I, for- I forget what it was called. Little um, Nicky? <laughs> that's a good movie, actually. Um, but like it's, anime has so much variety. You could do whatever you want in it. And the medium can still be like really bad with like an art style, and it still be good. I've watched some <laughs> trash anime that I just had some genuine laughs and like some like outrage. I mean, Not outrage, like I'm um, pissed off, I, but like just like outrage. I die on the berserk anime hill too. I mean, like everybody always complains that the anime adaptation's so bad, and you know, like the the actual animation quality is terrible. And I'm like, I'm not gonna say you're wrong. But, like, at the same time, there's so much that's there that's, like, still, like, so badass that, like, mm-hmm. you're you're wrong. Like, it, it, no, I, like, I get you. Like, yeah, the animation, like, some of it is, like, it's controversial obviously, mailed, obviously mailed in, like, in this this scene or whatever. But you know what? Like, the the characters and stuff, and the, it's just like, hey, it is what it is. The Devil is a Part-Timer, Fruit Basket is actually, Fruit Basket is made me cry, like, on several occasions. Like, Legit, like fruit, don't get me started on my homie um what's his name where his uh his mother doesn't want to recognize him i forgot what his name uh momichi yeah momichi like dad ah, damn that kid is so that little gay boy needs needs a hug <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea him. what you're talking no idea what you're uh, talking about okay so check this out the devil is a part-timer it is about it's it's called res- a reverse isekai usually at isekai is you've heard of sword art online you don't know what it probably is though it's fine i think you explained Sword-a- this to me once isn't it yeah is, is this the like the the, the the undead hunters or whatever. No. No. <laughs> so, so okay. So I'm not gonna talk about you're reborn art, but... in an ultimate alternate yes, universe or something you're like that. You're reborn into a world, but in this case, a reverse one is whenever you're taken from the fantasy world into the actual IRL world. Okay. So gotcha. the devil literally is put into a corner that he's actually not killed, but he's forced to visit the real world. And he doesn't have his magical powers there because they, it, there's there's an entire lore to it, bro. I'm not going to get super into it, but That's like fine, yeah. because of how poor and how new he is to the world there, this is like there's like a cultural barrier. He becomes a part timer at like a McDonald's, and it's a it's a comedy. It's a it's an action comedy. Don't get me wrong, but like it's a comedy first and foremost because it's just like here you are, you're watching this guy who's the actual devil with some really badass powers to do some crazy cool stuff is like surrounded by all these people who either want to kill him uh, and have like a lot of grudges against him is just flipping burgers to make him ends meet. And he's really proud of it too. It's, it's funny. Are you a one punch man fan? I'm cu- I'm just curious. I like the first season. I actually never yeah. watched the second season. Second season is not as good. But, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know where the third season, season is either. It's, so yeah. uh, are you familiar with the guy who created it? No. So the guy who created One Punch Man, uh, he never had intentions to actually do a season two, but obviously the first season was so well that we got to we got to continue this. So he actually left that that entire studio left to work on Mob Psycho, 
uh, mm. Mob Psycho 100, which actually probably gets significantly more praise than One Punch Man. Mm-hmm. Like One Punch Man and Mob Psycho 100 are like completely different animes altogether. Oh, yeah, but yeah. I mean, as far as like you know where where everything went, that's that's probably why season two of One Punch Man wasn't as good. Yeah, I th- the animation quality was noticeably different. Lucifer, too. that's what it was called. Yeah, and no, it's not a dumbed down version of Lucifer. What well, Lucifer is just about Lucifer being horny and like just <laughs> constantly not being able to smash. Like I've seen a little bit of it. All right, that's all it is. What it says, a, a what it says on Wikipedia. If you if you Google, yeah, the, Google, the plot. Look, look into what Lucifer is, <laughs> look, and it's just about at who very ed- pretty horny man. Look at look at who edited that description last too, and it'll say Jada Yuki next to it. <laughs> Jada Yuki five nine twenty twenty two. Don't even waste your time. Although I will, re- I do kind of respect Netflix a little bit for this because I know Lucifer has a really big following for it. Um, I forgot who was running it. I think it was like ABC or something like that. They were like, yeah, we're canceling the show. Yeah, Yeah, and and Netflix bought it up to finish up the rest of the season. I do respect that. That's actually kind of cool. Netflix does some trash stuff, but I think that was pretty cool. Yeah, they've done that with a few franchises, I think. Uh, Some, like, animated ones, I think, they've taken up, like, like long-running, like, not even animes, but, like, cartoon-type didn't they do that with like Futurama or something? Weren't you saying that they somebody did that? Hulu is doing that with Futurama. Okay, okay. I think I think Hulu's done that more than Netflix actually, and I think that's because Hulu is owned by Disney, so they have like way more flexibility to yeah. do that than Netflix can. Although I was really looking forward to Netflix's uh, Bones adaptation. I don't mm. know if you're familiar with Bones, but it's like a it's yeah, like an old comic. The actor, the main actor there, I think it was Bones. Uh, went to the same college as me, so it was like. Mm-hmm. Oh, you gotta watch Bones if you go to this college. Oh man, it's not happening anymore. I was really stoked about that. I loved watching the comics when I was in high school. They were just really chill. It's got some pretty cool lore to it too. But um, um yeah, end end in session about anime on why it's the superior entertainment session. medium. Um, You've been blessed, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, do you have an upcoming game? Do you think people should? Hell get no, I don't, man. No? there's none mm-hmm. that's why <laughs> there's none we've talked about them all to be honest uh, i mean like at this point it's just waiting for e3 whatever the xbox and yeah. playstation and nintendo versions of e3 are yeah i've got an existing one you guys should check out it's called bpm bullets per minute it is a uh, rhythm- oh, dude that thing's pretty cool rhythm based first person shooter that kind of blends like it's like doom and like viking like like nordic lore there's a lot of like valkyrie type stuff mixed in there and uh, yeah, yeah, rhythm, like actual rhythm FPS. And if you haven't played it, I don't know how much it costs. Maybe like, I don't know, 15 bucks, 20 bucks. I don't know. Not on sale. Yeah, it's a really good game. And it, like, I remember the first hour, it was like really hard. But then when it clicks, it's so much fun. Like it, actually playing in a uh, first person shooter and killing these like, you know, monstrous uh, enemies to like a beat and shooting your guns. It works so much better than you'd expect. So definitely yeah, check it out. Looks, that game looks pretty dope. I, I remember Cliff Blazinski even like tweeted about it and I was like, oh, that's, that's pretty cool. Too yeah. bad Cliffy B is like not a cool person anymore, but like that's, <laughs> that's cool that he got, he gave the shout out for his. Yeah. He's his got status. a big platform still to this day. Mm-hmm. So Hogwarts oh. legacy. I'm going to, I'm going to read that sentence out loud, how I read it. Hogwarts legacy is such a sad thing. That's that's how I just read that statement. Uh, you're just a J.K. Rowling hater. I don't care about J.K. Rowling. I literally you don't. Are, you are seething and foaming and bleeding out of your no, eyeballs I how much you hate J.K. Rowling. I literally have no opinion. Leave our dumpster wis- w- My witch opinion out is of your on... politics. Mayor, it's not. I don't. I don't care about her at all. It's the game. It's you the game. keep saying it's the this. Franchise. We have this argument every podcast. Harry Porter, get it. Harry Porter would be a superior franchise. I promise you. I can't believe you. You finally just had your one boomer moment, like the other day, and like here you are saying what? Harry Porter would be better. <laughs> Somebody. So one of, that, was, that was one of my one of my viewers that said it said harry porter and didn't know that it was improper and in fairness to him english isn't his first language so it, harry porter know, harry porter yeah uh, I, mean, like, I don't think it's basically I, bully three I, I don't know about that <laughs> they never even made bully two they were supposed to and then they canceled yeah, it like five times they canceled it yeah because rockstar doesn't make games anymore they make games as a service make game as a service 
game is for yeah. the past 15 years it's been gta 5 man I, I actually forgot that they they announced grand theft auto 6 yeah i forgot that they've done that i feel like it's still ages away yeah like this was actually a couple months ago too this is rockstar is weird though like they could sometimes they just like they don't give like any information about their game so they could almost like stealth drop gta 6 if they wanted i don't they don't think they will but they could no they won't but they're, they're there's weird. gonna be so many mad people whenever they find out that like gta online I, isn't gonna like transfer over their stuff be a hot take but i i feel like rockstar is probably one of the most overrated developers in in the industry and roxy did you just refer to elder scrolls as just skyrim <laughs> <laughs> i'm bullying you by the way yeah i'm not trying to be facetious what was what is bully spirit I don't was there a like a spiritual successor you mean Frank I think I think that's what you mean I don't there could be let there's lots of indie like oh by the way you totally got to check out BitBuddy Jedi you'll love it itch.io BitBuddy Bit Buddy. it is a itch.io itch itch, itch. itch. oh you I was like that's before? an actual URL no. you, uh, itch is amazing there's all these like really like short indie indie games on there that are all like free like experimental but a lot of the developers are like prominent de like developers, but they just make these like small projects and like we like we can't commercialize this, so just have this twenty minute game that I made. It is a you know the developer of Inscription, right? You remember that game, Inscription, that Devolver released like six months ago, maybe? You should. It's really good. It's bizarre. Mm -hmm. It's like a horror card game. And I know that sounds weird, but if you Anyway. It's like this 15 minute game from that guy. It is a horror inspired free to play permadeath Tamagotchi. And from the second you boot up the game, your Tamagotchi is begging you not to kill it. And it it goes some weird places. And it's it takes you could literally Dark as hell. Why would I want to do that? <laughs> it is. It's amazing. You got to check it out. Everybody in chat should check it's it out. It's amazing. You absolute psychopath. Oh my god. I don't want that hey. kind of guilt. <laughs> it's it's. I want to be gaslit by this like sentient item that's like literally <laughs> seconds old, begging me to like not kill it's it, a, dude. It, like, it. I don't want to do that. Flips, it's it's genius because it flips that childhood Tamagotchi thing. Like you know. Like into it, onto its head in an extremely creepy way. It's awesome. I guess. Yeah, I guess in practice, yeah, that is that is pretty smart actually. But I will probably never play that game. That's it, it I don't want to live with any kind of guilt. If you open the game and then close it, you'll have basically seen enough Look, to be creeped out. I don't know where she's at. I'm pretty sure she's behind the pillow right now. But she doesn't do that to me. She just comes up to me and annoys me when she's like, "Please feed me," not "Please, I'm gonna die. Feed me." So I'm. I'm okay with the real life version of it. She doesn't yeah. gaslight me. Don't do it to your actual. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it's it's about time though. Time we to gotta go. wrap up here. Yeah. So uh, right. that's been this week's episode of the Beyond Nemesis podcast. I'm gonna throw up our sponsors, and uh, we're gonna head out. So say goodbye, Jadai. Bye. I'm say going goodbye, to Yuki. Like, that's a cl great close the closing line. And I'll see uh, you on therapy. And if you play Bit Buddy, you'll all need therapy. So go do that. Catch you later, guys. Play, if you like King's Canyon, you'll do therapy. Bye. <laughs>